Hello everyone, my name is Eugene Lichow and I'm a beta tester for Alice Lab Studio Clouds and today I'd like to show you a little bit about the Studio Clouds program and a couple of things that it can do, a little bit about the interface and that sort of thing. Um, I had first heard about Studio Clouds when it was a plugin for Maya and wasn't really that interested in it because I'm a, I'm a Max user but eventually a uh, rumor got out that Alice Labs was creating a plugin for 3D Studio Max and that kind of perked my interest because I am a Max user. Uh, one thing to understand about the software is that it's almost like two pieces of uh, software in one and one is that there's a standalone application that includes uh, some different modules and that sort of thing and then there is the plugin to 3D Studio Max which is simply a menu that is loaded and, and it loads up the, uh, the point clouds that sort of thing. So the first part of the process would be to import your point cloud into uh, Studio Clouds and there's just an import function here up on the screen and you can bring in several uh, there's several types of formats that you can bring in here and this list is, uh, is growing from what I can tell. After it's been imported the point cloud is converted over to a Alice Labs native format and once you go into your 3D Studio Max or Maya then you can uh, open up the, uh, the native format and manipulate it that sort of thing. Two things that interested me in Studio Clouds uh, the very first thing was that uh, obviously that it was uh, useful in 3D Studio Max but the second thing is the the fact that they can handle a huge amount of points and it's extremely fluid on the screen so I'm, I'm currently using a 64-bit version and it's a beta version so uh, what I show you today may not be the same tomorrow uh, it's it's changing pretty fast and there's a lot of features being added so keep that in mind but I'll show you this I've got a scan currently up uh, in the viewport here and I'll back out a little bit to show you the size. On the left hand here, you'll see that there are uh, a total of, there's actually a total of seven scans, but you'll see that the point count in each of the scans is approximately 18 million points or more. And um, for when you multiply that by seven, you're talking about 120 something million points. And if you can see the way I'm just manipulating this on the screen, it's just like, uh, I mean, it just slices through this thing like butter. It's very, very fluid, very easy to handle. Um, you know, easily uh, easily manipulated on the screen. So I think it's a it's quite an interesting technology that they have under the hood here. Um, so looking at the interface here a little bit, there's a uh, a section here on the left that gives you some different uh, views, looking at the uh, orthographic view perspective and some standard views. Then there's also a zoom extents and there's also a change pivot, which just uh, well I can show you as you click through the point cloud, it just changes the focal point of the uh, display. As we move across the top there's some menu items, there's an undo and redo and there's also a, uh, a point size button so you can increase the size of your points and you can decrease them back. So, And then there, there is a number of uh, tools up top here for display and right now I have the RGB display on but there's also uh, RGB stereo, there's reflectance, um, there's a color ramp and there's also grayscale and I'll show you the uh, the color ramp is kinda neat because um, you can choose uh, or make a custom color ramp so right now I actually have a, a custom color ramp here and I can switch that back to the default uh, which is the default so it's just kind of all reddish in color here um, but it's easy to make one there's a uh, color ramp manager and you just double click on different points across the bar here like that and with each one of these little uh, circles that shows up you just double click and then you can start uh, defining your uh, different colors for the ramp and I'll choose uh, do this very quickly here obviously and I'll call this uh, our demo demo one or something like that I'll add that and then I'll just display it up here uh, demo one so there you go so it's displaying my uh, color ramp which is kinda neat as we move across there's a uh, something called the limit box and the limit box is really just a way of um, displaying, uh, a, you know, the extents of the point cloud. And you can uh, scale this limit box to cut off and get into just the areas that you're interested in. You can rotate it, you can translate it. Um, I'll show you this. Uh, when you translate the limit box, uh, you'll notice that it changes color. Well, it's actually affecting the color ramp uh, on the left here. So depending on the height. Uh, where you place the limit box, it uh, automatically applies the adjustments from the color ramp, which is kind of nice. I'll go back to RGB, and then of course you can just uh, you can create a limit box, uh, picking points, and, and toggle the limit box. There's also uh, 
some features for measurements. So there's a distance measurement tool. You can just click on a couple of points and it just automatically puts up a little uh, a leader with uh, some information. There's also single point picking. So if you need to find uh, um, the coordinates of a particular point, you can do that quite easily. And there's also a little uh, annotation thing where you can stick in notes. Um, I'll just call this tank or something like that and uh, apply it to your uh, your point cloud which is uh, a nice way of keeping it informative and organized. The other thing that Studio Clouds offers is a cloud editor and the editor is um, kind of neat in that it operates uh, kind of like Photoshop in layers so I'll, sh I'll get into a, a point here uh, something like this let's say uh, one of these tanks and I've created a layer what I'm going to do is create a selection from that layer I'm just going to take a a section such as that and you'll see that it, it just highlights it like so and we can do some different things uh, with the point cloud we can actually add or subtract to the selection or even just remove sections of the cloud but we can also do some paint brushing which is kind of nice and I'll select a bluish color and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make the brush a little bit smaller and you can just go on here and just start start brushing in uh, like that and you'll notice it got cut off here because it actually doesn't let you um, paint beyond the uh, limits of the selection like that and what you can do as well is uh, you know you can build up these layers and do different things you can also shut uh, par parts of the layers off to protect um, some of the things or some of the work that you've done so it's a really neat uh, and interesting little program there's uh, some other features that are being implemented and uh, I think as time goes on it's going to be uh, very interesting to follow uh, studio clouds um, Perhaps in the next little while, I'll prepare a little bit more uh, of these little videos and show you some of the developments as they happen.